Hi everyone, Adam Parrish with LearnBridge Online. And I wanna share a hand with you from my Thursday Declare Play class. And this is not a hand that was well bid, it was greedily bid, but it's not a bidding class. You don't need to focus on the bidding and we're not even gonna talk about the bidding here, but it's a hand where we got to seven no trump. And these are all real life hands uh, that I bring in with the, the actual bidding. And so if you look at this hand, you can see that seven hearts is a really good contract. So let's count our tricks in no trump, right? We have six heart tricks and three diamond tricks is nine and ace king of clubs is uh, 11 and the ace of spades is 12. And in hearts, we have an easy 13th trick. We can just rough the 10 of clubs and there's 13 tricks. So we got a little greedy trying for seven no trump. Well, now we have to try to make it. So we have our 12 tricks. Where is the 13th coming from? Well, it can't come from hearts. It can't come from diamonds. It has to either be the queen of spades or the 10 of clubs. We have a finesse in both suits, right? We could lead the four of spades to the queen. We could lead the jack of clubs, you know, up towards the dummy. Does the fact that they led the deuce of clubs tell us much? People don't tend to lead away from queens against seven no trump. So I think that's a little less likely to work, but maybe they're being a little tricksy. At the end of the day, why is one finesse better than the other? Well, we do have this information about the lead, but we also want to combine our chances because there's another way that we could get an extra trick on this hand is if someone has the singleton king of spades and we play the ace of spades and the king falls, our queen is high. Or if someone has a doubleton or singleton queen of clubs, we play the ace king and our 10 becomes good. And even though those are pretty small chances, there's no reason not to try for them. And so the way to play this hand there's no need to take this finesse to begin with, right? If we decide to take it later, we can. I'm going to play the jack here as an unblocking play. And the reason for that is if I now choose to finesse to the 10 of clubs, I can. But if the jack were in the way, I wouldn't be able to. So I'm going to run all of the, all of the hearts. And we all know how fun this is for the opponents. So we're running all of these and we're taking a look here. We got a spade and a diamond. West played a club earlier. We got another spade. Another club. So I'm going to throw a spade here. And now I'm going to play off the diamonds. All right, so we got three cards left and we're missing the queen of clubs still and the king of spades. How do we play this, right? We could play the four of spades to our ace and then finessing clubs, or we could play the four of spades to the queen and finessing spades. Either one is fairly evenly likely. But which is more likely uh, on the other side, that the king of spades is falling or the queen of clubs is falling? Well, it has to be queen doubleton of clubs is much more likely than singleton king of spades. And so the way we should combine our chances here is we start with the king of clubs. If the queen falls, our 10 is high. If not, we're gonna take the spade finesse. On this hand, East was actually squeezed. They had to hold the club and the spade. They couldn't do it. We get, we get our finesse at the end. Easy peasy, right? So the point here is about combining our chances. The spade finesse and the club finesse are 
relatively equal, the lead notwithstanding. But the chances that the club queen falls are certainly higher than the chances that the king of spades would fall. So starting with the ace king of clubs, even if it's only a 2% chance that the queen of clubs falls, and it's a little higher than that. I don't even know the number. I don't care. It's not a high percentage, but even if it's 2%, why not take advantage of that? Why not turn a 50% slam into a 52% slam if it doesn't cost you anything? That's my philosophy. So, yeah, this is the kind of hand I love to bring in, uh, where there's a real lesson here. It's not clear, like, this is always what you should do. Um, but it's how we think about the hand. That's what really fascinates me. So I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope I uh, see you on a Thursday in my class sometime. So long.